jump right into this. So this again is the NTSB report. Um, this is the 11 and 12 that they're so focused on. This is the one I showed you in previous videos. There's number 11, there's 12. Um, and let's just go you know, like five tabs here. Here's another report from them, a previous one. And again, um, just showing you their data, showing you they have photographs of the structure. They have photographs of the structure that they're pointing towards number one, two, and three. Photos number one, two, and three. Pointing, locating the cracks in a wrong position. The cracks are up here. They're pointing down here. So this shows their, their, their uh, ineptability, if you will. That is not where those one, two, and three photographs are. You're looking at a crack here. You're looking at a crack here. These cracks are, are not bypassing each other. They're opening, opening. They're not compressive. They're opening cracks. Clearly, it's open higher here than the lower point here. So to do that, you'd have the mid-span, if you, if you will, of this design. Let me find it. The mid, we'll get to that article real fast. The mid-span of this design falling in the middle, creeping down in the middle here, and this would drop this lower deck, cracking this section here. Um, you could also get that by, if this member could be made smaller, and this was not being made small, that little, this little 8-inch uh, um, chamfer, I think they refer to it as. Uh, now, it is not... Being, it's not bypassing. You can see it obviously stops here. It doesn't keep going. So you just can't get my right hand on here. If I could show you guys, put your right hand on here, put your left hand on here. Push your left hand up in the air and pull your right hand down in the air. You would not get this crack. That would be sheer. You would not get this. If you were to lower the deck in the middle, you would get this. So the deck was failing in the middle. It's sort of like the chicken and the egg I was writing. What came first, the canopy failure or the deck can't failure, the chicken or the egg? Uh, you know, what would really tell this guy right here? The surveyor, apparently they had a surveyor there taking survey points. He would be able to tell you how things were moving and what degree, um, well, he or she, whatever. The company would be able to tell you based on their their uh, survey survey data what's going on this is not the same crack this one is not the same as this one this is the opposite of posing um well this one this one might be down to number two i, I don't know uh, they're, they're not very photograph number five okay photograph number three it, it's not there this is not where number three is that is not there that chamfer is probably down on number two nevertheless this is the uh, these are the mirroring cracks I believe of the post tensioning, and this might be down on number um, eleven, or it could be down on number two. That it could be on one of those. This is again is the guy uh, uh, BPA I think it is the inspecting guy for for um, for the university. Now with that said, I did show you guys another video where cracks etc were supposed to appear. This was supposed to come to a stop, and a repair was supposed to be determined. Um, so apparently this did technically come to a stop, right? And they talked about it in the meeting. And so, you know, I like to play both sides. I just don't like to throw, I, I like, I try to be neutral and accept data. Well, that meeting did take place and no one stopped Denny Pate from saying going forward. So Denny Pate could argue that, Hey, you know, I, I got to go ahead from you guys. You were all there and no one stopped me. So, uh, you guys approved my plans. That would be a good argument for Denny Pate. Um, now, coming back to, this is the NTSB's arg, uh, yeah, video here. Um, it will be a good argument. This is all wrong. So 11 and 12 is what everyone's referring to. 11 sheared 12. All right. This is the problem I have with 11 shearing 12. Of course, you guys know I have all types of problems with it. But let's just go to, well, Google. If 11 sheared off 12, push 12 off, well, 12 is still in place. And if I show you guys recall, I show you wire back here. The 12 is not pushing off this wire. It's not shearing it off. There's the base of 12, 
and it's it's not sheared off. There's the ground of 12. There's not like magical material just disappeared, and you can tell me the canal and all other crap, but the back of 12 is intact. I showed other videos of this. So 12, 11 did not push 12 off. <coughs> 12 is in place. It's sitting there, unless people are dumb and blind. Not you guys who watch me. You're intelligent and smart. Then we look at the base here. Did 11 puncture down? Shear well, how did it do that? And then put itself back up here. But it's okay. It's okay. Because this did not do it. This did not push off. This is number 12. Here's number 11. It did not push it off. Because inside number 12 are PVC pipes, etc. In my previous video, a video I have, and now I'm going to make it private, guys, because... Uh, this is before the video showed up, and I talked about number 11 buckling. It, number 11 didn't didn't really buckle, um, and that was because of what the data we had. Once the video showed up, that was awesome. Um, that that shows now that, and everything else I've been evaluating over the past year, it shows now that number 11 pretty much didn't have any any forces going from the load transferring over to this ground right here. When I say this ground, this is the post tension rod that they were tensioning in number 11. This is one of them. It's no doubt in my mind this is one of them. This is the direction that it was being post-tensioned. This is one of the ones that would have failed. Literally, we're looking at it. It's intact. So if number 12, number 11 sheared, number 11, this would be inside number 11. This is inside number 11, this cable here. And it might be this cable that we're looking at because it's in the deck section. So if it's inside this section, and this would have been the one they were post-tensioning at the time of failure, was it this one? I believe it was this one, right? So we're literally looking at the one that failed. The uh, If that sheared, well, it wouldn't be there. If this pushed over, this would have sheared this cabling, right? Depending on the uh, depending on the uh, cable shear, shear strength. But let's just go with it did not. Let's just use the data we see. So we see that um, even the plastic, the plastic on this is not crushed and everything else. If it's shearing, this little thin plastic clearly would be destroyed, right? Clearly, it would be destroyed first before it um, before it uh, met the resistance of the cable, and then um, continued. Uh, then the concrete would have broken. But clearly, the, before the, sh the resistance of the cable would have met, this would have been crushed. I see no deformation of these ribs. Do you see deformation of these ribs? I don't see any deformation of these ribs. They look awesome. So this would uh, be a non-shearing uh, moment right here. This is non. And then now we have the deck. They're standing on the deck. And this is, number, num this is inside number 12. We're looking at the internals of number 12. Here's number 12. Now there are some bars on the outside, not to be confused with those. And we go to here. And you see that these pipes, here's the external out here. Here's the internal. You can see the walls inside. So you see the pipes here. So if number 11 sheared number 12, wow, it's amazing. It magically sheared number 12. Now when this went down, it just, it just hinged it up. It just hinged number, it lift number 12 off. That's all it did. It lifted off as it was falling down. Um, through all the bending moment in the middle of the bridge structure, falling down, lifting it off. And I showed you that in another video I did with with um, my green drawing. It's just a hinge action, guys. Just a hinge, lifting it off like a fulcrum, like a pry bar. Number 11 act like a pry bar, lifting number 12 off of the column, off of its base. And you can see it's not solid filled. Um, off its base. And, and that's all we're looking at. Now let's jump to Linda. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me let me pause that. Good. Well, let's let's let it play for a minute. Let's see what I have. I don't have the volume one, but they're just moving a uh, material away from the base of number eleven and number twelve connection. And we're looking at again the post tension member, and you see nothing. It's just where it hinged and. There's deformation. That's where it was crushed by the concrete coming into contact, or that's where it broke the uh, the other uh, mm, caging of the half inch rebar. Apparently, half inch approximately rebar. Number four, if you guys like to hear that.
Okay, I'm just going to pass on that. Let's go to the, to the last thing I want to give you today. And again, there it is. There's the whole guy there. As the deck collapsed in the middle, the chicken or the egg, which could have failed first, the canopy or the deck. I think the canopy creeped down. Again, those, those, uh, the uh, surveyor would be able to tell. The as-built guy, he'd be able to tell. if they, and Apparently, they did real survey equipment. Um, here's an article, and I have, I'm going to critique it a little bit. A couple of things they did wrong, but the uh, it says the morning of, of March 13th, this is two days before the collapse, FIG's president, Linda FIG, emailed Pate, noting that it was important to address the issue. Pate informed FDOT of the cracking and Pate's supervisor, and, I, and Pate's supervisor, I guess it's Pate's supervisor, it's not somebody above Pate. I think Pate's like a vice president, right, or something like that. It would be Linda Fig, I believe. Emailed MCM, so it's somebody who works under him, I believe. I, I don't, that's kind of a weird, ambiguous um, wording. That's part of a critique. Emailed MCM, noting that Fig did, did not see this as a safety issue. Well, that means if, if this is on the 13th, that means Fig had some data on it before then. We want to see that data also before March 13th. So they had data between March 10th and March 13th about these cracking. And then they had a meeting on the 15th, which was two more days later of the collapse. So this, Denny Pate made a decision, or this supervisor, this is just some stuff there. You get my point. Around that time, FIGS engineers decided to move forward with a repair method. Uh, the first step of which a repair method they're claiming. Are oh, you ready? Okay, cool. I'm out. Uh, involved tightening steel bars that ran through the cracking truss. Hey, look, I got to go. Um... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to finish this another part of the time for you. Please enjoy that part of the video. Thank you, and sorry for jetting on you. Please give me a thumbs up. Share the video if we can. You know, let's see if we can get the data out there. Again, uh, shearing's not, didn't take place. It, you know, I'll find the other video for you guys and do an update showing again that 